Hey there, have you been looking for a step-by-step -step guide on how to create and send emails via subdomain on Bento, make sure you got all the settings right and everything like that? Well, you're in luck because I partnered with Bento to make some tutorial content and this is one that I just think is absolutely necessary because I know it was difficult for me at first to try to understand all the steps that I need to take depending on what tools you're using and everything like that. So I'm very excited to share this tutorial with you. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be using Bento, obviously, and then for DNS and domain registrar and everything like that, I'm gonna be using Cloudflare. And then additionally, we're gonna be doing some stuff in Google Workspace. Those are the tools that I prefer to use. I'll have links to everything like that in the description down below if you wanna check any of it out. Your stack may differ. I wanna make this disclaimer up front. But I do believe that if you follow these steps, you could probably figure out how to do those other things the same way. Like the obviously the UIs will be different of the tools and things like that. But if you understand the concepts, then you should be able to adapt this to different platforms if you're using something else for DNS or if you're using maybe Microsoft instead of Google or what have you. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I will do my absolute best to answer them for you. Now that we know what tools we're gonna be using here, if we hop over into Bento, you may already have an account most likely, but if you, if not, there's a free trial, link in the description, everything like that to take you right over to Bento. One of the first things that you're gonna have to do and decide on is when you need to create a site in Bento. And all this means is you give it a name of your site. So for instance, like your business name and then your primary website and then enable data protection or not. And all these are, are just because Bento has a great system for tracking the data that is going on when you're sending emails, site visitors, all that sort of stuff. A little bit outside the scope of this video, but if you don't have this yet, I just wanted to make sure that you have this set up because we're going to be dealing with settings and the DNS records and all that sort of stuff for the particular site that we're dealing with with inside your Bento account. So if you're following along step by step, what I want you to do right now is I want you to enter the name of your business in your create site as you're setting up your Bento account. But again, you might already have this. I want you to make sure that your business name is in there or your website name is in there. And I wanna make sure that you know what your primary website is. This is gonna be important later because this is just the, this is just your website, right? Whatever your business website is. But if we're doing a subdomain, which I'll talk about in a second, where there's gonna be different settings and you're just gonna, I wanna make sure you understand where all the settings are, the UI and things like that. So these are just some very basic general settings. We'll make sure you have all this, this created if you have your new site on your Bento account. And then we can move into the actual DNS records and sender authentication and things like that. If you have your site set up and you're in the Bento main UI here in the main dashboard, just do me a favor and make sure that you are operating under the correct site. Bento is awesome. You can have multiple sites in the same account, but up here in the top left, just make sure this business name is the one that you want to do all the DNS records for and the authentication. You could have multiple sites. I just wanted to make sure that you we're aware of the one that we're working on here. Depending on where you're at in your Bento journey, there may be some prompts or different things like that, but if you don't see anything, this is where we're gonna be operating. If you go to the left-hand sidebar, you click settings, you come down to sender authentication. This is the main page of the Bento UI that is gonna tell us what DNS records we, use, we need to use, what things are working, the status of our DNS records, stuff like that. This is the main place that you need to see to make sure that all of your emails are going to the, to the right place, getting delivered and everything like that. And if you see red X's, that's obviously where, where we're at right now. We wanna turn those into green check marks. That's kind of the point of this video. Before we go any further on the technical tutorial, I wanna make sure that you understand the reasons and the advantages to sending from a subdomain rather than from your main root domain. In this case, with this example, my root domain is finditech.com. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be sending our marketing emails, our newsletters, our e-blasts, what have you, from newsletter.findatech.com. I'll explain more of that and you can pick your, your subdomain there, but I want, to, I want to make sure you understand why we're doing that. There are two really good articles linked in the description down below from Bento about this subject of why do you use subdomains when you're emailing. But the main thing that I want to get across to you as far as my interpretation goes is that if you use like for instance, finditech.com as your root domain to send direct emails, then that's fine. Like you're in your Gmail inbox or whatever and you're sending the emails, that's awesome. But if you did that for your marketing emails and then if you had like an e-commerce store or just any sort of like orders going on, if you use just your root email for all of those, the way email works, the, the apparatus of email, right? The whole emailing system is that there's many things that go on, right? There's like link bombing and spamming and all sorts of stuff. And there's really important things that I'm gonna not go too technically into, but there's the, the idea of like a domain reputation. If your domain reputation gets damaged, then that is gonna potentially result in your emails going to spam. So think of it is 
if your domain email is if your domain reputation is damaged, then you're sending emails to your customers and they're not getting them because they're going into spam, they're going somewhere else, and they're not landing in their inbox. So if I could summarize why we're sending these marketing emails from a subdomain, it's really to mitigate risk. Instead of just sending everything from finditech.com, we now have technically three domains, even though there's one domain and two subdomains. Just think of it, the whole thing as like a domain. We really have three domains. We have findatech.com, we have newsletter.findatech.com, and we have notifications.findatech.com. And again, I'll put it in here. You can change that first subdomain to whatever you want, but that's the example we're gonna be using here. So for instance, if something happens, some sort of spamming issue or something like that out of my control happened and newsletter.findatech.com got plagued with a bad reputation, let's say. The other two channels, my main email address, just the root of findatech.com, and my uh, transactional email of notifications.findatech.com would not be affected. It's still not a great scenario, but then I could just simply switch out the newsletter one and then I would be better. I'd be able to rebuild that reputation and everything like that. So again, I wanna reiterate, go check out those articles from Bento and do some more research as well. But if you're here already, then maybe you've already made the decision to use a subdomain, but I wanna make sure that you understand kind of the reasons and you're not just like following along like blindly. There are real reasons and a lot of them revolve around risk mitigation. With that context out of the way, let's talk about what we're gonna achieve here and get to it. We are going to, at the end product here, you're gonna be able to send marketing emails from a subdomain of your main domain. On your end, you're gonna to have to do some find and replace, so to speak, with the wording that we're using here, but I'm gonna tell you what my situation is. Finditech.com is my main root domain, and I'm gonna be sending emails from newsletter.finditech.com. Those are my marketing emails. We'll talk about transaction only emails way at the very end of this. I have an extra little tidbit for you there. But we're gonna talk about specifically marketing emails because that's gonna be the main use case here in Bento. Okay, so if you're on the sender authentication page right now and you haven't done anything, this is just the default setup with your main root domain put in there, Bento is gonna go ahead and it's gonna generate some DNS records for you right off the bat that you could use, but we're not going to. What I want you to do is look at this list and you can copy these if you want, but you're not gonna need them, but I want you to take note of what's going on here. You're gonna see in this name column right here that the names, the individual records have in this case, findatech.com. Once we go through our next steps, they're not gonna say that, they're gonna say our subdomain, our full thing there. And also right here, we'll change as well where it says findatech.com. It's going to say newsletter.findatech.com. It's an important key distinction because if you see that, then you know that you're getting the proper DNS records that you're gonna be able to copy and paste over into your DNS management platform. So take note of that. And then we're gonna head over to emails and we're gonna head over to authors. Once you're on this authors page, you may have some by default, a couple different authors already here. You might have one, for instance, like first name at findatech.com or newsletter at findatech.com, depending on if you've played with this before or not. If you have current authors already set up, don't touch them. You can just add a new one up at the top right, or you can edit a current author doesn't really matter, just make sure that you're not messing up anything you already previously had. For demonstration purposes, I will go ahead and I'll click add a new author. And let's talk about what I would add in here. Now, the name field is what is going to get sent when you send an email under this author, this is what's gonna populate in the name field in people's inboxes. So you can make your own decision here, just some insights. You could either put it as your name, your company name, or like your name from your company name, doesn't really matter. This is just what's gonna show up there. You can always come back here and change that, but that is what that field uh, basically does. This is the one that's a little bit more important because it's obviously technical and it's what we're gonna be talking about specifically here. This is the email address that is sending those emails. So again, this is another opportunity to hammer home the concept of what we're doing here. We are not sending from hello at finditech.com. We are sending, in this case, from hello at newsletter.findatech.com. Understand the difference because it's a very big difference. One is your root domain, one is a subdomain off of your root domain. Now, if you're entering something into this email field, I will tell you that your root domain here is not really an option. It's not really up for an option. Like you can't you can't just change this out because it's important, but you can make the, make the decision right now whether you want to news, use a newsletter for your subdomain uh, and what you wanna put in front of here. I wanna make this abundantly clear before we continue to move forward because this decision is going to impact future decisions and, and steps that we take along the way, but it is personalizable. What I decided to do here was I decided that I wanted the email to be hello at newsletter.findatech.com. You can make yours basically kind of whatever you want 
as long as it has your actual domain at the end and you can control all the DNS and everything like that. But my point is that you, there, there will definitely be questions in the comments, Mark, how do I make it high at updates.findetect.com or something like that? You can. Just make sure that as we go through this tutorial, you are mapping mentally the, the different words. Like for instance, I'm gonna be using hello, you would be using hi everywhere I'm using hello. Uh, I'm gonna be using newsletter, you would be using updates everywhere that I would be using newsletter as an example. And the other, the other bit of it is that I'm gonna link this up again. This is one of the links from earlier. It's in the description. It is Bento's documentation. And there's just some e examples here. So like an example of like for transactional emails, for marketing emails, these are the ones that we're kind of talking about here. So like newsletter.yourdomain.com or updates or changelog or what have you. You can use whatever you kind of want as far as the, the subdomain goes, but just understand what you're doing here. Technically, you're creating a subdomain of your root domain and there are other things that we're doing in the background. We're not just picking something out of thin air, but from a marketing perspective, you can pick what you want this to say and how this you want this to look. This first part is less important, but it's still important to note mentally. So very, very easy way to go about this is just pick hello at newsletter.yourdomain.com or whatever, but you can change those. You'll just have to do a little bit more mental mapping as we go through this. But that's what I'm using and that's what we're gonna be using here. So let's move forward with that in mind. So let's go ahead and create our author. And now we're gonna have potentially two or more depending on how many you have set there. One note that I do wanna make here is that if you're not using authors, maybe there were some default ones in there. I like to delete them if I'm not using them just to keep any area like this clean because I know I'm gonna come back in three, six months or something like that. I'm gonna be like, am I using that? Am I not using that? If you wanna do that, you would just come over to here and you would just press archive and then boom, it's gone. So now we're just operating under the one that we have created here and we know that we're gonna be utilizing uh, this setup for. So now if we go back down to settings over to our sender authentication page, what do we have here? Well, like I said earlier, I wanted you to note these DNS records because they have automatically already been updated for us. It used to say just findatech.com, now it says newsletter.findatech.com, which means the actual records themselves are appropriately reflected and we can go ahead and utilize those. It is at this point where we need to jump out of Bento and we need to move into and actually utilize these DNS records. We're not gonna do anything with them here. Bento is providing them. We need to take these over to our DNS platform that we're using for our specifically our domain name here. In my case, I am using Cloudflare. To, I use Cloudflare to register my domains and I use them for my DNS as well. Your case may absolutely be different. You might be using Namecheap to register your domains. You might be using Cloudflare for the DNS to link that up. You might be just using GoDaddy to register your domains and control your DNS. It is important to understand that I cannot create a tutorial that explains every single one of these possibilities, but every single one is very similar. They're doing the same things. So just keep that in mind. So again, you don't have to use Cloudflare, but in this case, I am. If we pop over to Cloudflare, we're gonna go take a look at the DNS for the domain that I have, findatech.com. And again, if you're if you're new to kind of understanding this and you're playing around with yours, you're gonna have, you're gonna want to manage the DNS of findatech.com or your domain. You're not gonna need to manage DNS separately for the subdomain. I know it gets a little confusing there if you're not used to it. You're managing it for that main domain and you're gonna create subdomains all within that one DNS management of that root domain. So there is a bunch of different steps and I'm gonna get you keyed in on a ton of little tips that are gonna make sure that this works for you and is a cohesive as possible experience because now you're gonna have like extra subdomains and all sorts of stuff. I'm gonna make it as clear as possible and as good as possible for your customers when they're interacting with all these different emails and everything. Here is what we need to do within our DNS to make sure that this all works. You're already gonna have some DNS records in here, most likely if you have a website, if you have email and everything like that, do not worry about any of that. Just don't touch any of it. Everything will continue to work. What we're gonna handle first is we need to create the record that actually creates the subdomain. Because as of right now, unless you already had it created, you don't have a subdomain for your actual domain that we created there. You don't have the newsletter dot find a tech. We need to create that and it's very simple. In Cloudflare, we're gonna click add record. We're gonna come down to type. We're gonna call it a C name. In our name, we could use at for the root, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna use newsletter. And then our target is just gonna be our main website name, our main root. And the reason we're doing that is because, and you could do it differently, but the reason I'm doing it this way is because think of it like this. When somebody goes to newsletter.findatech.com, 
I just want them to just get redirected to the website. I don't need them to go anywhere. I don't want this to be a separate different website. There'd be other applications where maybe you'd want your newsletter dot find a tech to be its own website or redirect somewhere else or something like that. But for my use cases to make this as simple as possible, I do not want, I want the subdomain, I need it because I need to be able to send and use it, but I don't want to have it redirect anywhere other. I don't want them to go anywhere other than my main website. If for some reason they would type that in or click on a link somehow that like shows that up. This is more of like a housekeeping thing almost. For Cloudflare specifically, you're gonna have a proxy status. I leave mine turned on. You can do whatever you want there. And then I, this is just one random thing I love about Cloudflare is a little comment. So you could always come back and reference and see like what this was or what it was for. I don't really need one for this one necessarily, but for the other ones, we definitely want to because things get out of hand very quickly when you're adding a lot of DNS records. So to illustrate this point, if I go over to newsletter.findatech right now and I refresh this, we're not gonna see anything. If I come back to Cloudflare and I click save on this, so we now are gonna have this item in our, this record, DNS record in our DNS. If we go back over to newsletter.findatech.com, it will just redirect directly to findatech.com now, which is what we want. So if we head over here to newsletter.findatech.com, now I do wanna mention, this is my preferred way of handling this, but you're probably gonna run into an issue. You're probably gonna run into an invalid SSL certificate because what you're trying to do is you're trying to send that domain, that ultimately newsletter.findatech.com, through the browser, over through Cloudflare, and then try to hit your host. Now again, we haven't even really talked about hosts, and it's a whole outside of the scope type of thing here. I use Gridpane, I'll link to them in the description, you can check it out, I have other videos on them, but depending on who your host is, you're gonna have to handle this situation a little differently. If you have a, just an included button toggle that you can click to put an SSL wildcard on all of your domains, then you could handle it this way, you could flip that toggle and this will be fixed right away. If you don't have that or you don't wanna go through that or anything like that, then you can, try, you can try this a different way where you can set up a redirect so that if anybody goes to newsletter.findattack.com or anything that is has that in the URL bar essentially, then they'll get redirected to your website. I'll show you how to do that real quick just in case you wanna go that route. How you would do that in Cloudflare is you come back to your dashboard, make sure you're on the right domain, you come over to rules, redirect rules, and then you create a rule. Cloudflare recently made this way easier and better, and there's like some templates almost that you can utilize. You can try redirect to a different domain, you can create the role, and you can kind of give it some different examples. What you want this to do might vary, but you can play with this as, as you would like. This is just gonna redirect it. So if incoming request matches custom filter expression down here, host name equals to example, then redirect to wherever. If all you wanted to do is whenever somebody goes to newsletter.findatech.com, if you wanted to redirect to findatech.com, here's how you would do that. So you would go, you could leave it at custom filter expression, host name equals newsletter.findatech.com. And then down here, all that does is redirect to your main website. So if you deploy that, and then we come back over to our newsletter.findatech.com invalid SSL situation and we redirect, it's gonna take you directly to your website now. So those are two ways of handling that situation. The latter example, the redirect, is probably something that you will have access to. The SSL gets a little weird depending on who you're hosting with, like I said, but regardless, that is kind of a more of a housekeeping thing. I wanna make sure that's important though. The reason it's important is it's aesthetic, but when you're sending emails from newsletter.findatech.com, and then somebody were to click on that or like even just kind of going through the email again, like the email systems, the email apparatus, there is definitely a rule of thumb that you don't wanna be sending from an email address, right? Sending from a, a domain, subdomain situation like that, that doesn't resolve to a website. So it is important, how you get there isn't super important, you could go either route, but you wanna make sure that if somebody ever clicks on that or if it gets picked up or linked somehow, that it does go to a website. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're just being as conscientious as possible to our reputation for all of these things that we're doing, our domain reputation and such. So now let's go back to our sender authentication page and grab these different DNS records so we can put them into our Cloudflare DNS. So honestly, very straightforward. If you've ever copied and pasted DNS before, if you haven't, I'll give you the high level. There's a type, there's a name, and there's content. Sometimes those have different names to them, but types are the most straightforward one. There's C name in this case, and there's text that we have to copy. In these other columns, there's, like I said, name and content. If we head over to a, I'll just give you a quick example of one, right? So we come in and we say add record. We would change the type to C name. For our name section, we would head back over. We, would, we can just click to copy because Bento is so nice. We can come back over and we can paste that name right in there. And then, like I said, over here in Cloudflare, the other field is called target. 
If we come back to Bento, it's going to be called content, but just copy and paste what you have there and then put that right into that field. If you are in Cloudflare, I'm going to give you a tip because I remember having issues with this. I would turn off the proxy status for these ones. I don't know the extreme technical description for all of that, but in order to get them to populate properly and check properly over in Bento, I found that just having it off is, is better and more reliable. Um, and the other thing that I want to say is absolutely write a comment in here if you're using Cloudflare, because you will forget what all of these DNS records are for once we put them all in and then we have additional ones that we're going to talk about later. So definitely type in something like, you know, from Bento or created with Bento for email. So just a little note like that and go ahead and press save. And there you go. You're going to have your first Bento DNS record added in there. If we go back and we click to recheck these validate and validate these records, we might, we may just see one of these uh, red X's go to a green check mark. So it might take a second for you there, but now you can see that one of our five DNS records has been validated, has the green check mark. We're, all we're going to do is we're going to do that exact same thing for the next records and we're going to get five green check marks and it's going to be fantastic. So I just went ahead and did the le next three off screen there for you, but it's the exact same process because they're all C names, bang, bang, copy, paste, good to go. I want to make a quick note about this text a DNS record down here because one, it's slightly different, just maybe your UI normally for text elements is or text uh, DNS records is different. But I want to give you a buzzword or a buzz phrase and it's DKIM. It's very like a DNS mail adjacent uh, type of uh, record that you may have. Uh, obviously, it's a text type, but it's specifically DKIM. You'll probably see it in potentially in Google or other like services that are using your domain to send emails and stuff like that. The point is that you need this, uh, obviously, because it, it doesn't, uh, it, it's not validated yet. And you kind of go about it the same way. You just copy this, you come over to um, Cloudflare over here, you click text instead of um, C name, and then you will paste these in. The point that I'm making is the thing that I would tell you to do is in your comments, if you have it, or just, you know, either in Cloudflare or whatever else, just say Bento DKIM, because that's one of the things that we're going to need to make sure that we. Uh, we have in order for this full setup to work and you are absolutely going to forget what it is later down the line if you need to check it out for any reason. You can see now we have five green check marks, which is fantastic. I will say that sometimes you have to refresh a couple times or maybe like wait a few minutes, sometimes a little finicky, um, but at some point it, they will all be validated. It just takes time. That's what the, kind of the nature of DNS and then you will be good to go on that front. The next thing we're gonna tackle is a section called DMARC. Now, mine already says something here because I already had it set up from a different email situation on different platforms and things like that. Yours may not, depending on how new your domain is, how new you are to the whole, like, you know, maybe domain email in general, which is outside you know, the scope of this marketing email situation. Let's just assume you don't, and I'm gonna give you some insights on how you can set that up and your different options. If you're using Cloudflare, I personally use the Cloudflare DMARC reporting situation, which is a, a nice free feature that's just directly in the free plan of Cloudflare. I'm gonna go over how to do that. If you are not using Cloudflare, however, there is another uh, like service that is widely recommended. And you actually probably, if you don't have this set up already, there will probably already be a link right in this DMARC box for you in this DMARC section within cloud, uh, within uh, Bento. But you can go over to this website here and you can enter the domain that you'd like to create a record for and go through. And then basically all you're going to get is a another DNS record that is going to create this DMARC protocol situation for you. There are really good analogies and support articles out there and just like information about what the DMARC record actually does. Um, but in, and there's a couple different settings here. I'm going to tell you what I do just as a place to start. And then you can depend, you know, depending on what you want to do, you can decide uh, differently with uh, the settings. But there's only a couple different you know, kind of like fields in here basically that you can adjust to suit your needs as far as your emailing goes. So because I'm already using Cloudflare DMARC management on that domain, I'm just gonna go to a different domain in Cloudflare and this will be the exact same experience you would have if you've never used this, but you're using Cloudflare. Make sure you're on the right domain and you would click enable DMARC management if you go to email and then DMARC management here on the sidebar. As soon as you click that, they give you a DMARC record that you can just click add and it will add it directly into the DNS. It'll set up the management so you know the stats on everything coming through and then you can head back over to the DNS on your domain and you can check to see that that text record is there. So bare minimum, that's all you need for the DMARC situation. It should 
after you know maybe a couple minutes or whatever, go back to the sender authentication. You should see that you now have that in there. Your the line in there about needing one should go away. And I would strongly suggest that if you want to dive into that a little bit more, just type in and do some research research on DMARC because there are a couple things that you can configure there. But again, the default is fine for most people. One other thing you can take a look at now is if you go back to emails and authors on the sidebar, you can see now that the one that we set up here also has authenticated DMARC right here. When we didn't have all those DNS records and DMARC set up before we had that like kind of error message or like that warning, but now everything is good to go on that front for that specific author. So at this point, you're just about there. You have an author, you have all of the DNS set up and everything like that. Everything should pretty much work. I would recommend doing some tests, but here's the last thing that is actually kind of important, and I feel like most of the time people might skip this, myself included at first. There's one other kind of rule of thumb. Remember earlier when we were talking about newsletter.findatech going to and resolving to a website, regardless if it's, maybe it's a redirect or maybe it's like an actual C name like redirect like that, however you, however you end up doing that. Um, there's reasons for and against and everything like that. The reason I like doing the C name approach is because kind of related to what I'm gonna tell you next. Imagine the situation where you're sending out marketing emails. So your customer receives an email from hello at newsletter.findatech.com. Well, that was the address that the email was sent from and we all know that there's like something called a reply email address. And most of the time, if you're sending a direct email, then that reply email address is gonna be the same as the sent email address, but that's not normally, you know, that's not always the case depending on you know if you're sending uh, you know different types of emails or mass mass emails marketing emails transactional emails it can change and it's something to be cognizant of so the next decision that you have to make is when you're sending from this new address what is your reply email address going to be to or are you going to create this email address to make sure that it can receive an email the rule of thumb though is kind of like we created this new email address we created this thing that can that can receive or this can send email we should really be able to receive email at this address too. And this is where it gets a little interesting depending on what type of email your provider you're using. In my case, again, I'm using Google Workspace. I was able to do that and I'll show you how to do it. Uh, it may Your mileage may vary depending on other platforms that you're using. But to reiterate, what I'm talking about is you kind of want this hello at newsletter.findatech.com to be able to receive email. And if you've been following along step-by-step step to this point, that email address is not going to be able to receive email because you just created that kind of, and we can send from it, but we can't really receive. So you might be a little concerned at this point that you're gonna need to like get another user for your email or something like that, depending. I can't speak for every platform, but with Google Workspace, I have found a very simple, straightforward way to do it without getting charged extra for another user or anything like that. And I've been very happy with the way that it's gone. So let's go through it. Let's talk about how I would add this email address into my Google Workspace that I already have for the domain findatech.com. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to admin.google.com and sign in because this is where we're gonna need to make some tweaks to some of the domain settings and other things that we're doing here for our actual Google Workspace user. Right here on the dashboard, there should be a box that says domains and you're gonna to wanna to click on manage domains. And you may or may not have ever been on this page, but I'm gonna to explain to you what you're seeing here. When you signed up for a Google Workspace, you're gonna see finditech.com or your, your domain there because that's the one that you're accustomed to, right? That's where your domain email is, that's where you see all the stuff. Well, surprisingly, Google Workspace has a really cool feature where you can add another domain to this same like set up the same account and there's a couple different ways that you can do it and you can do it in, in multiple different scenarios based on what you're trying to achieve. So this is a very preference-based approach and your business approach, but for me, I didn't want to create another whole like domain or another inbox or anything like that. I just want kind of an alias so that I can get the emails that are sent to hello at newsletter.findatech.com. All I want is people to be that that, that more of like an alias virtual inbox, we'll call it. All I want is to, for it to be active. I just wanna be able to get email to that, the MX records to actually receive email there and then come directly to me. I don't need a separate inbox, I don't need anything like that. There's ways that you could play around with that, but that is the main thing that I'm gonna do, that I wanted to do. So to achieve that on this add a domain page, we type in newsletter.findatech.com and we click user alias domain instead of secondary domain. Then we'll go ahead and click add domain and start verification. So we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get started on the verification here. You can select your domain host, which is just where you where you have the domain, where your DNS is. Uh, Cloudflare, I believe, makes it quite easy, but there's a whole slew of other uh, options that they have here. So I'm gonna click continue on Cloudflare. So it'll most likely give you some sort of verification text record that you're gonna to have to add. You may have already had one from when you started, started depending on 
you know, where you signed up with your domain, where you registered and all that sort of stuff. But if it gives you this, go ahead and throw this into your DNS just like you did before. If you do that all right, then you're gonna see that you have verified it and then you can start using Gmail with your domain. This is the important part because we're gonna go and activate Gmail and we're gonna get the emails and everything like that. And again, at this point, it's very important to understand if you're using Google Workspace on your domain already, you're not overwriting the MX records that you had before. You are probably gonna have MX records, maybe like five or six or one, depending on when you got Google Workspace and got set up on all that. But the point is that your main root domain is going to have MX records associated with it. What we're adding is more MX records for our subdomain here of newsletter. That way the whole email system knows when it's coming from findatech.com versus newsletter.findatech.com and everything gets delivered appropriately. If you've done that correctly, you will come back here to the Google Workspace setup and everything will be ready to go. If we take a look at the manage domain screen one more time now, we have findatech.com as our primary domain, we have newsletter.findatech.com as a user alias for it, and we are set up as we would want to be. There's one other thing that I wanna make you aware of if you're not aware of already, because uh, it affects this situation and you could, you could utilize it if you want. Within Google Workspace, in your own user, you could have an alias just for that user, like a specific uh, email address that you also wanna receive email to. So if you have msemansky at findatech.com as your main email address, you could have another uh, alternate email, so to speak, right? So in this case, maybe we want to also create newsletter, at findatech.com and understand, I know there's a lot of confusion here now, but there was hello at newsletter.findatech.com, which is what we created. It works. Uh, it can receive email. It can send via email. Like it'll work. But if you also want to do something like this, this is something that I've tested in the past and does work and is possible. You can create a alias for your user, newsletter at findatech.com. It's just a little more simple. It's a little easier for people to read, understand, and maybe type in. And then you can create a situation with those email addresses that, you know, depending on what you what you're trying to achieve, you could set up some sort of like different customized reply to address. So for instance, one way that I've used this, utilized this method is I have had that main email address that we created be the email that I'm sending from. So I'm sending from hello at newsletter.findatech.com. But within Bento, I've created an environment variable, a reply to address that is always newsletter at findatech.com, for example. There's not really a big reason to do that. It's just a little simpler. It's a little different. And then if you want, for any reason, if you need to create a, a simpler email address that people can send to, then you can go that route. Main point that I wanna make here is what I just did by creating this alternate email address within Google Workspace. I cannot send emails from that newsletter like easily. It's not its own inbox or anything. It's just another alias. I'm just giving you guys ideas at this point of ways that you can play around with this because there's all many different ways to handle this. It all depends on your business case. It all depends on your organization, how many people you have, how you're handling and routing everything. Just trying to give you some information on what Bento is capable of, and uh, different ways that you can play around with it if you'd like. At this point, we are pretty much completely done. I wanna give you one last tidbit that I told you I would give you in, earlier in the video, and maybe for a future video, you can let me know if you want me to dive into this concept further. When I think of Bento, I think of marketing email first, but there is another thought process, and that's transactional email. The difference between marketing and transactional is people can unsubscribe from marketing emails, and you know that's like if you sign up on a website and then you're getting like different sales and clearances and all sorts of stuff, right? The stuff there. That's what we define kind of as marketing. There's the other section which is transactional and that's the emails that you absolutely want to get and you should not ever unsubscribe from or not want and that is if a customer comes to your website and they buy something, they get the email that is like, hey, thanks for your order, here it is, your order information, all that sort of stuff. Nobody ever wants to unsubscribe from that generally and that's a transactional email. It's part of a transaction process so to speak. Personally, I haven't dove too deep into this within Bento yet but I wanna show you something that is very related to this that uh, is just kind of a cool thought that I had and could definitely be of use for to you if you wanna extend Bento even further on the transactional side of it. So everything we did here, right? We created, you know, like a, this author, and this is the main piece that I wanna that I wanna show you. We we were looking at this page mainly in Bento, and we were looking at our sender authentication, right? We remember what that looks like. If we head over there and just take a look. DNS records, we have one set of them for newsletter.findatech.com. But if we remember from earlier, transactional emails are kind of the same 
technical way, right? We wanna create a way to send from a different address. So maybe we wanna send from notifications.findatech.com. How would we even start to begin that process? Well, we would go back to authors, we would add a new author. So effectively what we would be doing here now is the same process and the same steps that we did for marketing, but we would have our transactional email hat on, so to speak. So maybe we do something like find a tech notifications as the name or whatever, and then hello at notifications.findatech.com. Now we're not gonna go through this whole process because it's the same thing as we just did, but I wanna show you one specific thing that I didn't actually know was how Bento would handle this, but it's actually amazing. And so let's say that we wanted to go down this train and we wanted to use Bento from tr for transactional email as well. We create another author, and now we have these two authors, our one that we've been working with and our new one that we just set up. You're probably wondering like, well, Mark, I didn't see anything in the UI for the sender authentication for like more authors or more domains or anything like that. And I'll tell you what, I didn't either. That was at least until I tested this before making this video. And now you can see on this page that there are multiple sets of DNS records for multiple different authors that you would do based off of the domain that those are using. So you could have actually like 10 different authors all and like um, you know, eight of them could be using uh, one domain, and the other, and the other two could be using a different domain, and you would still have just these two sets. So it's all based off of right here, right here, notifications.findatech.com, and then also newsletter.findatech.com, and you can see that it's accurately reflected. We didn't set up the notifications one uh, for that for that author and for that domain name, so none of those DNS records are. Uh, validated. So I mainly wanted to share this with you because I just literally, like I said, just discovered it. And that is something that I could definitely see myself using later down the line because the, um, the amount of integrations and flows and like steps and all that sort of stuff that Bento has built in that you can extend things like maybe like a WooCommerce in WordPress or a Shopify or a Surecart or what have you. You could absolutely use this for a transactional email. You could go a step further and do like cooler things that maybe those built in emails that you get from e-commerce platforms can't let you do. Uh, and it's something I just wanted to explore and it was it fit right into this because we're talking about all the sender authentication and everything like that. Let me know if you have more ideas and wanna see more tutorials and things like that because I would be more than happy to dive into that and share that with you guys. But with all that said, I really hope you got something out of this video. If you did, click the like button down below. If you haven't tried Bento yet, if you haven't signed up, I'll leave a link down there as well for you to check it out. If you have any questions or need anything clarified, leave a comment. I will do my best to answer every single one of them. And again, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it and I will talk Talk to you in the next one.